Okay, so how in the world do we find the derivative of the natural log function? Now, notice I have a graph here, and on that graph we have um, the function uh, ln of x, which you should recognize. Okay, there's its uh, equation right there. And then in red, we have the graph of the inverse of ln of x which hopefully you know is the function e to the x, okay? And we know, uh, as is the case with all inverse functions, uh, we have a nice symmetry here between these two, um, a symmetry uh, along the line y equals x. So if I were to draw in uh, this line right here, these two functions would be mirror images across this dotted line. So recall the derivative of the natural log should give me a slope of a tangent line to the curve y equals natural log of x at any given point x. So let's consider one of those points. Here's a point x on the x-axis and here's a point right above on the curve of course, this point would be how high? That's right. It would be ln of x high. Right? That's the height is given by the y coordinate, and y equals ln of x. Okay? Now, keep in mind that if we draw this point here, and we're after the value of the derivative, that's the slope of the tangent line through this point. Now, just lightly drawing in the tangent line. But this whole thing has a mirror image in the graph of e to the x. Just like I can find this tangent line to this point, there's another point over here that mirrors this. And where is it? Well, all we have to do is swap the x and y coordinates, right? So the point that corresponds to this one would be not at x ln x, but rather at ln x x. Okay, so that's this point up here in the tangent line maybe something like that. Okay. Now, consider the slopes of the red tangent line and the purple tangent line. Think about what slope means. It's a, it's a quotient of rise over run, right? Does it make sense that if I consider the run and rise here for the purple tangent line, that the role of rise and run are simply reversed on the red tangent line. My old run becomes my new rise, and my old rise becomes my new run. With that in mind, and given that the slope m equals rise over run, if I reverse rise and run, I get a reciprocal to this fraction. Right? I'm just flipping uh, the positions here of rise and run. So the slope of the red line and the slope of the purple line should be reciprocals of one another. So if I'm after the slope of the purple line, I should be able to find the slope of the red line and simply reciprocate it. Now, finding slopes of uh, tangent lines to the red curve should be easy. Hopefully we are already aware of the derivative for this function. In other words, the derivative of e to the x is simply e to the x. So if I want to find the slope of a tangent line, let's say at 3, then that would simply be e to the third. If I want to find the slope of the tangent line at 0, it would be e to the 0, or 1, and so on. So if I want to find the slope of the tangent line to the red curve, to this y equals e to the x curve, at this input value, ln of x, then the slope I seek is e to that input value, e to the ln of x. But this simplifies, does it not? Remember, e and ln are inverses of one another. They will cancel each other out. So this I'm left with simply x. 
the slope of the tangent line to the red curve at this input value is simply x. But what does that mean for the slope over here on the purple curve of this tangent line? The slope has to be 1 over x. Remember, the slope of the red line and the slope of the purple line are reciprocals. So the reciprocal of x is 1 over x. That's the slope at any point x on this curve y equals ln of x, and hence our derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. Isn't that a pretty argument? That's it. We're done.